Hello, this is the beginning of a short video series that is intended to give you a quick introduction to Scala. Uh, we're assuming that you have some programming background and that you are new to the Scala programming language and we just want to get you up to speed uh, quickly on what you can do with Scala and how to work in it. First you're going to need to download some tools. So you can get Scala itself from scalalang.org, the download uh, link will take you to where you can uh, pull stuff down um, install that somewhere on your computer I will be using Eclipse as my IDE so there we go uh, we can, you can go to Eclipse um, if you prefer you can use IntelliJ if you want you can use no IDE I'll actually show you how you can compile things with without an IDE command line but for most of the videos that I do, I will be using the Eclipse IDE. And if you're going to use Eclipse, you will want to get the Scala plugin for it. Uh, you can download a bundled IDE. I actually prefer to go and add an update to whatever the current version is. So at the time of the making of this video, the current version of Eclipse is Neon, and it turns out that the version 4.4 works even though it doesn't list neon here it works just fine under neon okay so let's get started I want to write some a basic application and of course where do we start off well, pretty much all programming tutorials start off their first application is hello world and I'm going to do this the first time hopefully I'll spell it correctly I'm going to do this the first time using command line. So I'm going to use VI. I'm just, you know, it's a basic text editor. I am going to create the application. I'll show you how you can compile it and run it from the command line. And then we'll open Eclipse and run, do basically the same thing inside of Eclipse so you can see how it would work inside of an IDE. All applications in Scala are basically declared as objects. So when you're writing applications, you can only put one of three things at the top level, either an object, a class, or a trait. We'll come back, we'll talk more about the classes and traits in a bit. These object declarations create singleton objects. And so I want to create an object called Hello World. It is not required that the name of the object match the name of the file, but it is strongly recommended that you do that mainly because it makes it easier for people to find code. The people can be you. So when you come back to a project after three months, if you have completely jumbled all of your uh, file names with the names of the contents, you will have a hard time finding things. So I'm declaring this object. It is basically a singleton object that just exists. I don't have to instantiate it. That is what allows me to, uh, to use it for a main application. And I'm going to put a method in it called main. The keyword in Scala for declaring methods is def, and so I will say def main, and I have to pass it the arguments. I can use any variable name I want, it is customary to use args for the name of the arguments. The type is specific, it is an array of string, and this does not return anything to us, and whereas if you were in say Java or C or C++ that is specified as void. In Scala, the thing about void is a void function truly returns absolutely nothing. Uh, Scala, because of its functional nature, functions and methods return something to you. When that something has no information, it is of type unit. Okay, so main gives back no information. So it has this return type here. Other things to note, uh, depending upon what language you're coming from. If you're coming from Java, you'll note that the name of the argument and the type are flipped. Same thing with the return type of the method is at the end instead of being at the beginning. Uh, if you're coming from a Python world, you might be like, what the heck are these types? Uh, because in Python, you do not have to specify those things. And then inside of here, I want to print hello world. And there we go. That's our first application. Now we need to run it. Scala does have a scripting environment. Now, of course, if I were writing Hello World in the scripting environment, I would have written just this one line. 
but we are doing more of an object-oriented development in this video series, and so I wanted to write a full application. When I write a full application, I have to compile it. And the command line tool for compiling is Scala C. So I can say Scala C and then the name of the file that I want to compile. And that winds up producing other files that are .class files. And Scala by default is running on the Java virtual machine and so it produces the same type of output files that Java produces. Now if I want to run this program I can simply say Scala and give it the name of the object that I want to run the main for. And there we go. And it prints out Hello World. So that's doing our first simple example from the command line. We'll come back and we'll repeat the same example but we'll do it inside of Eclipse so that you can see how to get things set up there.